ASMR. So it's basically, it's gonna hold this in place and it's gonna grab under the bearing. It's, it's really borderline. Hi guys, Fraser from Lifco Hydraulics. We have a unique troubleshooting video in that this pump is generating too much pressure. The customer says they want it to be compensating at 3,000 or 3,400 PSI, and this one's going up to 6,500 PSI. I think there's something else going on here. Let's take a look. This is an HPR 135. Do you see anything so far? So. Yeah, you can see that it's got like a sud buildup, so it probably has been gotten pretty hot. And it can be a mixture of a lot of things. It could be just wear over time and heat, or just a lot of contamination in the oil. Okay, well, what is this contamination? It is not that black burnt oil that's in there. The contamination would be little metal particles, typically metal that are floating through the system. You, If it's severe, they would see it right there in the oil of it. But uh, if it's not as severe, then you wouldn't see it until you maybe cleaned out the reservoir, the tank there. And then uh, you'd have a bunch of, at the bottom. So now I'll take the control off. What type of controls on here? Basically, I'm asking, what is this pump supposed to do? The control is a TL2. It's a torque control with a load sense. It does not have pressure compensation, so it would not pressure compensate on its own. But because it has a load sense line, that's a signal in there telling you how much load is required, thereby how much pump flow to provide, it could compensate by receiving a different signal, which means that this pump could be a compensating pump, but it's just not going to do it all itself. It's not doing it all contained in itself. It has to get a signal to do that compensation. It means that if maybe something is just not providing that signal. So now I have to compress the preload down so I can remove this bearing. And then after I remove this bearing, I've got to heat these two bolts up to get this control ear out. This is something we made, I'm pretty sure, but it is a Lindy type of tool. To be a Lindy service center, you have to have all these tools. We also make our additional tools to help us if we have problems that are getting solved uh, on a weekly basis. Once we tighten these bolts in, that's going to compress that barrel down this distance which is gonna allow us to get the tool under to pull the bearing without damaging the bearing. So it's basically, it's gonna hold this in place yep. and it's gonna grab under the bearing. Yep. And as you push down here, this is gonna to wanna to come up. And then it'll be kind of tight and then all of a sudden it'll just break loose like that. And then it comes right off. Oh, and it stays in there. Yeah. Now to listen to this. Great ASMR. Now this control, you should just be able to give it a wiggle. And it'll come out. I'll check my barrel. You have a bit of an edge on it, so it does have a lot of wear. But overall, it's you know you don't have like crazy deep grooves. It should lap out, no problem. On the shaft, it's also got the soot kind of build up. The splines look pretty good. The seal ring has a bit of cake on it. I was feeling with my nail earlier. It looks bad, but it's all about how it feels. Yep. So the shaft is still good. New bearing, but we'll reuse the silver. So I'll make sure there's no dings or bangs, cracks, anything like that here. The core plate would sit. It looks good. This core plate is non-serviceable, so it's replaced no matter what. Yep. What he means, uh, the core plate is non-serviceable. Just a fancy word saying, don't lap it. Housing looks to be fine. There's no obvious damage besides the bad paint. I'm in the control. Try to get some of the oil out. You kind of just 
peek inside. Like if you see metal shavings or anything like that, or big scratches or scores, then you gotta take it apart. But it looks like it's in decent shape. Why is he not inspecting the control? We think that the control is, could be part of the problem. The controls are fairly bulletproof. There's no seals inside those. It's also the control is something that if it fails, it's going to be readily apparent when a test stands. Not everything is. In fact, probably fewer things are, are apparent on testing than they are just inside the application. In this case, though, testing is, is explicitly testing the controls. So if we have a failure, we will see this on the test bench. So I'll start, I'll take these two off, and then I should be able to slide it out. No pull off. So no pull off, I'll feel around for a groove. You can see scratches, I don't know what angle the light would have to be to see them through the camera. A little bit. But nothing crazy, it'll probably polish out no problem. There is a small amount of wear here, but I've seen them lap out and I've seen them not lap out with this. So I'm gonna have Lloyd go over it and yep. see what he thinks. It's, it's really borderline. Like, you can feel grooves can going feel all the, the way through. Yeah. It almost looks like something got, has gone through it. So this is probably where 90% of the yeah, where you Come can down see, is. You, you can see where yeah. if you look in the right angle you can see the circle where the piston's coming in yep. and doing their compression. So that's where the, the groove is the worst. So it looks like it would lap up, but as soon as you start lapping it, then you're going to see this big spot here that's going to be too deep. It'll never lap out. It's not usable. We see a bit of the burnt oil inside of it. I'm thinking that's probably from the high pressure, uh, something with the a loss of lubrication that's occurring in there. We see marks, gouge marks on the components, particularly on that swash plate and on the piston shoes. That would be caused by contamination, so small particles that should have been removed from a, by a filter are now going through the system. And it would also explain why this pump is not getting the signal, the order, the command to compensate, basically. Why is it the system not telling it to stop producing more flow? It just keeps producing more and more and more until it's hitting this some other relief valve. And it's possible even that other relief valve could be a little clogged. Usually once we see a contamination, all bets are off. It can get anywhere. Every little valve could be compromised by pieces of metal going through the system. Customer wants to make sure that it goes to 5,000 PSI. We got 5,000 PSI, no problem. The pump is performing properly as per it should. Yeah. We just have to make sure what the efficiency is compared to a new unit to make sure it's going to be an acceptable standard. That's right. The, the customer says they were seeing 6,000 PSI. The question is, is it because the pump was ignoring a signal to stop at 3,000 PSI? We determined, no, it was not ignoring. If you tell it to go to 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, 1,000, the pump does that. Whatever you tell it to do, it does that. So something is telling it to do the wrong thing. So we have identified that the pump is not the problem. The pump has some symptoms of the problem though. It's likely that contamination has caused these signals to be unclear, these signals to not signal properly. If you wanted to tell it to 3,000, there's a good chance that this pump was being told to go to 6,000. Parker is a leading manufacturer of hydraulic pumps and components. We're a distributor for them. It's our main business, and they just awarded us Distributor of the Year for two separate divisions. We're beaming with pride. We just got these buy hydraulic shirts in. Thank you so much for watching the whole video. Send us an email, sales at liftcohydraulics.com with your address and size, and we're gonna give a few out.